Okay, you guys, I'm back with another video. <laughs> I'm back with another video, but um, I just want to come back on here because I want to share something with you guys. I want to share something with you guys. Um, so yesterday I was doing some cleaning. So yesterday I was just cleaning up. I was cleaning the room, and um, my uh, my daughter got this chef. It's this um, y'all might have seen them in the stores. It's like this. It's a clothing chef. Like you just. You just constantly like you connect them. You connect the shelf. So uh, we got the shelf. We got it from Amazon, and um, so I was re. Uh, we said it, it had fell apart. It came a little apart, and so well, my other my other daughter, her my daughter, her twin sister. So she like kind of like knocked it down. So um, I had to put I put it back together. I put it back together yesterday, and as I was pinning it back together, it was like so many pieces you have to put together, and you have to make sure you add like these like little black things. So you, the black things is like what holds them together. So you know it holds together. So as I was pinning them together, um, I remember in Sunday school. I remember in Sunday school, my Sunday school teacher. Um, my my old Sunday school teacher, not the class I'm in now, but when I was in a new conference class, my Sunday school teacher, um, my Sunday school teacher husband, he was teaching a class one day, you know, until she came, and he was teaching on your foundation. He was teaching on your foundation, like what is your foundation built on? So, um, so as you could tell about the, the title of this video, what is your foundation built upon? What is your foundation built upon on? So with that, uh, what what that meant, what what that being said is, uh, I just want to read you guys. And I thought about when I was building, like when I was connecting the thing, the the shelf together. I'm trying to explain it to you guys. <laughs> when I was connecting the thing, and the thing just kept falling. But as I remember, I was thinking about what my Sunday school teacher, uh, husband, what he said. He said, "What is your foundation built on?" And so I wasn't putting the black things in there. So when me not putting the black things in there, the foundation, it was going to fall. The thing was going to fall apart. So each time I was connecting, I had to remind myself, Melissa, what is the foundation built on? The foundation, if you don't put these black things in there, the foundation is going to fall apart. So when I was building it and I thought about that, then I thought about our Sunday school lesson from like some months ago. So Sunday school lesson month ago. This is my old Sunday school book. Um, I'm trying to see. Do I got the new one? I'm gonna show y'all the new one. This is. I'm sorry, y'all. So this is the old Sunday school book, and this is the. Uh, this was the spring quarter, but now we in the summer quarter. This is the summer quarter. So, um, off and on, like I'm gonna do some series like on uh, my Sunday school lesson. I'm just gonna do some videos on them to share with you guys. But this one was uh, our spring quarter, and it says uh, the house on the the house on the rock, and it's coming from Matthew chapter seven, verse twenty four, verse twenty four to twenty seven, and Proverbs. Hold on, y'all. I'm sorry. I should have had this together. But it's Proverbs. Y'all give me one second. Just one second. I'm going to get the scripture for y'all. I'm going to put it in the... Uh, I'm going to put it in the description box. Uh, description below so y'all can read it too for yourself. But I was just thinking about it when I was doing this. When I was building this shelf. And then I thought about this lesson this morning. And I said, you know what? I'm going to share it. I'm going to uh, share it, you know, with my um, YouTube subscribers. Like, what is you building your house upon on? What is you building your house on? Is your house built on the solid rock? You know, is your house built on Jesus Christ? You know, um, when uh, in a it's in the Bible, it's a scripture. I can't think of the scripture, but it's saying I think it was like uh, it was the Acts, I believe it was Acts, but it was saying how the whole house was filled. The whole house was filled. So if you could just imagine. If it's just one person in your house, if that one person is you, that one person is you saved, you saved, sanctified, you filled with the Holy Ghost, that the, uh, the Holy God's Spirit is going to spread. It's going to spread through the house. He said, your children, he said, your sons, your sons and your daughter, they shall be saved. And I believe that's in, uh, it's in Acts. I believe that's in Acts. Chapter Acts. Just read the first chapter of Acts 1. 
the first chapter of Acts 1 and 2, then it's Acts 2.38, but I believe it's the first chapter of Acts 1 or 2, and it talks about how your sons and your daughter, they shall be saved. Just through you, just through you, whoever, if it's you, your mom, your dad, whoever. So like me, my mom, my mom, God rest us, God rest us soul, she's resting in heaven right now. My mom, she was saved, sanctified for the Holy just by my mom being saved, and she prayed. So, so many, I have other siblings, we are, we, you know, they're saved too. Just by my mom praying, we all, it was all filled with, it was all filled with the Holy Ghost. It was all filled with God's Spirit, just through my mom's prayer. So, what I'm saying, you keep praying, you keep praying, you keep praying, and you keep saying, to asking God to save, you know, your son, your daughter, your husband, whatever family member, keep praying. Don't give up because I remember, I remember when I first got saved. I remember when I first got saved and at first, because I had some siblings, they was already saved. I had brothers and some, uh, yeah, brothers was already saved, but I was the first girl. I was the first, no, I wasn't, the, I was the second girl. Because my, I have a sister that's older than me. She was the first one that got saved. And then it was me. And then my other sister. So it was like it went on. So it's still some more of my, um, it's still some more of my other siblings. And I'm praying that God, he saved them, filled them with the Holy Ghost. But all of us, it was like, um, I don't know if y'all watched my, um, um, get to know me video. But, uh, it was 14 of us. It was 14 of us. It was nine boys and five girls. And all of us now, like even one of my brother, uh, he passed away in 08. But all of us, we all like, we in church. We all in church. You know, just through my mother's prayers, we're all in church. We all have a church to go to, you know. And that's why I say, you know, it's important. What is your house built upon? On? What is it built upon? On? Is it built on Jesus Christ? Is your house built upon um uh, a hay that's gonna fall apart is your house built upon the sand that's gonna fall apart as well? What is it? What is your what is your house built upon? What is it built upon? It's important that you have. It's important that you have your heart, your uh, your house built upon on uh, you know the solid rock, the solid work, the solid rock, which is Jesus Christ. It's important that you plant the seed, you plant that seed, you plant that word in them. Like my mom, she did. She plant that word in us. So now, even though she's gone to be with the Lord, we still like uh, her uh, her leg uh, her legacy still live on through us. We still like. We all still like uh, in fellowship with Christ. We still go to church. We still, you know, living for Christ. So, you know, just through her prayers. So, I, I just want to encourage you. You get a chance. Your kids, if you have like a little Bible storybook, read them storybooks and plant that seed in them right now. Plant it in them right now because right now we're living in a day and age right like, you know, you know, we hear, we hear it all the time. You know, the Lord is soon to come. But He is soon to come. Right now, I want to say we're living in the last day. We're living in the last day. With all this you see going on. Killing, like, back then we had, like, killing. But not the killing that we have, like, right now. Like, killing is just nonstop. I was on Facebook today. And it was, like, another girl got, uh, another uh, ch child got shot. And I was like, Lord have mercy. Like, during the 4th of July, you know, like the 4th of July, I didn't go out. I didn't go out yesterday. Um, I stayed here and I just did a lot of cleaning. My daughter's the away over one of um, a relative house. But I did not go out, you know. Um, you know, and even uh, last year, um, I went to maybe my brother's house. But I come back, I don't, you know, when life, when it get dark. <laughs> When it get dark, it's just like how we was trying. We was little, you know, we was little. They used to say, when them street lights come on, you about to be in this house. So when it get dark, I'm like, okay, it's time to go in the house, you know. And, you know, I listen, you know, the fireworks are going off and on. And I was trying to sleep. But, again, I just want to say, what is your, what is your foundation built, uh, built upon? What do you got your, your foundation built on? Just. Just think about that. I just want you to think about that. What is your foundation? What is it built upon on? So just say, God forbid, for you, you are to leave today or tomorrow. 
you want to be so that you leave today or tomorrow that your kids, he know Christ. Your kids know Christ. They know Christ. They know the word. They know when something go wrong, hey, mama did it. When something went wrong, mama prayed. Mama opened up, mama read her word. That you plant that seed in them right now. Right now. Plant that seed in them. I'm not saying like force it on them, but I'm saying like at night, what my mother used to do um, before bedtime, my mother, me, and all my siblings, she had us to read. Her favorite scripture was Matthew 7. Matthew 7, Acts, and it shall be given, seek, and you shall find. And we read that scripture every night before we went to bed. Even until mama, or even until my mother, she left this earth, I still read that scripture. And right now, I plant it in my kids. I plant them, uh, I plant that seed in them. Um, my, um... One of my daughters, I was talking to her one day, and she asked me, what was that scripture? What was grandma's scripture? And I'm like, Matthew 7, asking it shall be given, seeking you shall find, knocking it shall be opened. So plant that seed in them today. Plant that seed in them right now. <laughs> right now, plant that seed. So um, anyway, I'm just babbling, just going on. I just want to share that with you guys. But I want to read you something, read, you know, some of the lesson. It said, the house on the rock. The house on the rock. And this is, um, again, I'm reading from my Sunday school book. And it says, Matthew 7, 24. Therefore, whosoever hears these saying of mine and doeth them, I will liken unto him a wise man. A wise man. He said, a wise man. This is Jesus. He said, a wise man which built his house upon a rock. So, a wise man. Wise man, wise woman. Well, again, like I said, who built his house. He said, a wise man. A wise man built his house upon a solid rock. But a foolish man. I remember that. I mean, I used to hear that so much when I was young. People used to say uh, that scripture, a foolish man. A foolish man. He going to build his house upon sand. It's going to fall apart. It's going to fall. It's going to fall apart. He going to build his house upon uh, hay. It's going to fall apart. I know y'all know. Remember the story we said to our kids about, um, oh my God, what is that story? Uh, the three little pigs. <laughs> the three little pigs. And when the wolf came, he going to huff and puff and he blew the house down. But, oh, my God, when they went to the house, when they went to the house that was built with bricks, he couldn't blow it. So, you just think about the devil. You just think about devil Satan. He come, and if you got your house built upon the solid rock, and he come huffing and puffing, trying to blow your house down, and he can't get the blow down, it's because you got your house built on the solid rock. Your house is unmovable. It's built on Jesus Christ. It ain't going nowhere. When he come huffing and puffing, oh, I'm going to blow your house down. I'm going to get your kids. They, it's going to be unmovable. It's going to be unmovable because it's built on Jesus Christ. You say, you know what, devil? We ain't going nowhere because we standing on the word of God. It is written. Get thee behind me. You can't have me. You can't have my kids. You can't have my family, my husband, nobody. So go on, take your huffing and puffing on back to where you came from. So I just want to share this message with you guys on today. What is your house built on? What is it built on? Is it built on the solid rock or is it built on hay and sand? If you got it built on sand, you need to get to the solid rock. Get to the solid rock, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So... And I'm going to read the rest of this to you guys. Um, Matthew 7, 24 and 27. It says, Therefore, whosoever hears these sand of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended and the flood came. And the wind blew and beat upon that house and it fell. So, again, I said, you got your house built on sand or hay. The wind comes, blow it, it's going to fall. It's going to fall. Some come along, somebody come along, the devil come along, it's going to fall. You will fall. You will fall if you don't have your house built on the solid rock. If you don't plant that seed in your kids now, and this stuff going on, pandemic, coronavirus, all this, if they don't know 
Jesus, Jesus Christ. He is a healer. He is a deliverer. He's a uh, he will protect you. If they don't know this thing, somebody come along, plant some in their ear, they you fall, you get scared, you get frightened. So plant that seed in your kids. Plant it in them. If it's at nighttime, plant it at nighttime. What I usually do. Or my girls will go to uh, go to school. Uh, look flash card. I always to put scriptures. I used to put scriptures like on a flash card, and I would tell them every chance you get, you in school, take it out, reach a little verse, or I, you know, I used to do that up until like uh, up until they got in eighth grade. Then when they got in high school, I didn't do it as much. I would just pray with them before they go out the door. You know, I tell them before they go out the door, you covered by the blood of the lamb. You know, I'll just say little scriptures over them, pray for them. You know. So plant that seed in your kids right now. Pray over your kids. Pray. When you go to prayer, you go to prayer if you can. If they come in the room while you're praying, hey, come on, get on your knees with mama. Come pray with mama. Hey, last them. Plant it in them now. Because if you don't, they going to say, nobody told me. Nobody told me. You don't want your kids to have no excuse. When they go before God on judgment day, they don't have no excuse to say, I didn't know. Mama didn't tell me. Daddy didn't tell me. Nobody. You don't want them to have no excuse. So plant it. Plant that seed. Plant that seed. Watch it grow. Keep on, you know, um, putting the word in them. Reading scripture with them. If it's Bible study. If they want to come along, hey, go ahead. Come on, have Bible study with mama. Come on, let's sit at the table. Let's, you know, let's read. Um, what I used to do at night before I go to bed with my girls, uh, we have like our favorite scripture. So uh, I would read a favorite scripture and I tell them, what's your, you know, what's your favorite scripture? You know, read your, uh, read your favorite scripture, you know, before you go to bed because you want to have them. So when you read the word, when they go to sleep, they read the word, they go to sleep in peace. But if you don't uh, read the word with them or pray with them at night, you know, that's why some kids, you know, sometimes you have bad dreams and stuff. So you want them to be, when they go to sleep, they go to sleep in peace. They go to sleep with, with you know, with Jesus on their mind. So I just want to share that with you guys. And um, I'm going to read the rest of the lesson. And um, it say verse 26, Matthew 26, and everyone that heareth these saying of mine and doeth them, and doeth them not, shall be like unto a foolish man. So if you hear this, if you hear what Jesus is saying, and you don't obey, you don't listen, you don't build your uh, your house upon uh, a solid rock, and then if you if fall, whose fault is that? There's nobody fault but your own. Because here it is, He's telling us. This is what you built your house on. Build your house, your foundation on me. On me. Build your foundation on me. You know, you know, share. Share the good news with your family, your loved ones, your friends. Share the good news. You know. Uh, and you don't want your house to fall. Uh you don't want your house to fall. You shouldn't want your loved ones either. You know, share the good news. And you might say, Well, some mom, they don't want to hear. If they don't want to hear, hey, that's it. That's between them and God. I remember I asked my Sunday school teacher that one day and I asked her and I said, what do you do if you're witnesses to, if you're witnessing to a loved one and you tell them about Jesus Christ and they refuse it, you know, will God get you for it? Will he hold you accountable? And she was like, no, that's between them and God. Once you told them, you witness to them and they don't receive it, that's between them and God. So I was at peace. I just want to thank God, you know, that I asked her because I just felt bad. Like, I'm witnessing. I'm telling them about Jesus Christ. But some of them don't want to receive. And it says it in the Bible. Some of them, when Jesus, you know, uh, when Jesus was walking the earth, some of them, uh, his, uh, his disciples, they didn't receive him. So, it's just, you know, when we are children, we are uh, children of, of Christ. And we're witnessing some of them. They, you know, they did the same thing they did to him. They're going to do it to us. So, just... You know, just just letting you know, just suspect that if they reject you, hey, they they rejected your father too. So don't feel bad. And um, the last verse it says, and the rain descended, and the flood came, and the wind blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. So that's Matthew, Matthew chapter seven, verse twenty four to twenty seven. So when you get a chance, read it. I'm going to put it in the description down below. And then it's another one I want to read to you guys real quick. Um, Proverbs. I was reading this and I like it. Proverbs 24 and 27. 
It says, I'm reading you guys. Now, this is my, I think I showed this to you guys before. I'm going to show it to you again for those who didn't, who didn't see it. But this is, uh, this is my life application study Bible. It was given to me. It was a gift. My brother gave it to me. And I really like this Bible because when you read it, let me show you. Like, when you read this, you read this down here. Like, let's say you read this and you don't understand what it's saying. Down here is telling you what um, what the, the verse is about. So this is why I like this Bible. He gave it to me. I was like, I like that Bible. Thank you. <laughs> so, but I want to read you guys Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 27 says, Repair thy work without any make without any make it fit for thyself in the field, and afterwards build thy house. And I'm going to read the bottom, what it's saying, what the verse is about. And it says, We should carry out our work in its proper order. If a farmer built his house in the spring, he misses the planted season and goes a year without food. If a businessman invests his money in a house while the business is struggling to grow, he may lose both. It is possible to work hard and still lose everything if the resources to carry it out are not put in place. So that is what um, verse 27 um, is talking about. Um, so to say if someone, say if someone they build in a house, you build in a house. I want to say, uh, you build the house in the winter time. You build the house in the winter time, and then something go wrong. They say, you know, during the winter time, it's going to be cold, snow come. So you build in the house, and then you got to stop off because let's say uh, a snowstorm come. A snowstorm come, then you got to stop off. So you would say, like the scripture is saying, like it's best. Maybe you should you should have put it off, so you should have did it. Like maybe like maybe the summertime, maybe the springtime when the weather would might be a little better than started in the winter time. So, um, that's so again. What is you building your foundation on? What did you build your foundation on? And then the last thing I want to share with you guys, real quick. I was reading this and I highlighted it and I want to share with you guys. And it said building a house. Building a house. The prospect of moving into a home where everything is new is exhilarating. However, a lot of work goes into building a new construction from the ground up. This this age this age is ever so true when building a house. It started with the ground. Proverbs 24, 27. That's what I just read you guys. Give wise advice to the builder concerning the first work. Prepare that work. So prepare yourself. You planning to build a house, build something, prepare yourself. That's like when I was building the shelf. When I was building the shelf last night, I had to, I'm telling you, I had to really pray and ask God to give me strength. I'm like, okay, Lord, anoint my hands. <laughs> I said, anoint my hands to put this thing together. Anoint my hands. And when it was... And I was putting it together, and it was bloody trying to fall apart. And it was like, it just dawned on me, like, Melissa, you didn't put that black piece in there. You didn't put that piece in there to hold it together. So each time I was building and connected, I had to make sure I put that black piece in there. So, uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, I just want to thank God. And God, you know, we I, when I got through, I said, Lord, we did this. <laughs> Look, not me. You get the credit. We did this, Jesus. We did this because I really didn't want to put the things together. But I'm like, Lord, we did this. So you get the glory. You get the honor. And you get the praise because you did this. Okay. So, um, it said, prepare thy work and make it fit for thy for thyself in the field and afterwards build thy house. In other words, make sure things are done in order. So make sure it's done in order. You do it in order. And like when I was putting the shelf together, I had to make sure when I was putting it together, I forgot to put the racks in there. So I had to stop off, get the racks, put the racks back in there, and then build some more. But each time I was building, I had to constantly like, Melissa, put the racks in there. If you don't put the racks in there, you not it's not going to stay. It's not going to stay. Make sure you put the black piece in there. So, um... I just want to thank God for just leading me like when I was building the shelf and then I thought about this lesson. So it ties together. It goes together, you know. I'm just glad that I remember this lesson. 
And he said, make sure things are done in order. Start with the ground. Make sure the earth beneath the foundation is solid. There it is. Solid. Make sure it's solid. Make sure it's solid. Make sure it ain't no sand. You ain't building on no sand. You ain't building on no hay. Because if the enemy come, the devil come, and blow, it's going to fall. It's going to fall. And then, this is the last part. I'm going to read this part to you guys. And then I'm going to end this video. Um, blueprint. It said, when building the house, the first thing set into motion are designing the plans and drawing the blueprint. The blueprint reveals every aspect of the complete construction. What the house is going to look like down to the, the finest detail. Blueprints are meant to get to guide the uh, contractors so there is no question where everything is to be. God has given us blueprint for our spiritual house. His word. So the blueprint. There, well, I was telling you guys. His word. God word. His word. Your, the Bible, that's the blueprint. That's the blueprint. And I, I, I'm trying to I'm gonna remember what they said. Uh, B.I. Belt, if you don't know what it stands for, uh, nobody, per, per, what is, you know, you know it's Bible, but it's a meaning. The B.I.L.E. stands for basic, basic instruction before leaving earth. The B.I.L.E. stands for Basic, basic. I'm sorry, y'all. My tight, my tongue is getting tight, but it's basic, basic instruction before leaving Earth. So he left us the Bible. He left us his word, you know, to instruct us for, you know, when we get, get ready to leave out of here. So it said his word is the blueprint and has all and has all we need to make sure everything is included in our house. Not only does his word guide us with the plan for salvation, but it gives direction on how to live. So the Bible gives you directions on how to live. Everything in this Bible, it's going to show you. Everything in this Bible is teaching you. It's teaching you how to walk with Christ, how to live for Christ. Everything. This is a guidebook. You get a card, you get instruction. It's going to show you uh, how to, uh, what to put in it, what type of gas to put in that car. Same thing with the Bible. Once you get saved, you get saved. You get the Holy Ghost. You water baptized. You get the Holy Ghost. You have God's Spirit. Get your Bible. This is your instruction. This is your instruction on how to live. Everything in here. This is your manual. This is your living manual on how to walk with Christ. Okay? So, um, and anyone I, um, if you are, you know, you believe in Christ, you just uh, got a relationship with Christ, welcome. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. I've been walking with Christ for 12 years. It's going on 13 this year. July 23rd is my spiritual birthday to be 13 years. I've been walking with him. And I just want to say welcome to the family. Um, be encouraged. Continue to read your Bible. Pray. Stay in fellowship with Christ. And um, connect with connect with other believers in Christ. You know, your family. That's your family. You stay connected with other believers in uh, Christ. So you guys, you can have, you can share the same, you know, the same views. You share the same views, you know. So it's important, you know. Uh, we have our natural families who we was birthed with, but then you have another born again family, which is your, uh, your spiritual family. Okay. So welcome. <laughs> I welcome you. Congratulations on your new walk with Christ. And I'm not going to say it's going to be easy. It's going to be peaches and cream because you're going to have some ups. You're going to have some lows. You're going to have some high blows, some low blows. But hold on. I want to say hold on. Hold on to your seat and enjoy the ride. <laughs> um, I'm trying to see what I left out for. It said, but it's giving direction on how to live a victorious life. Resist sin and overcome temptation. A successful journey through life begins with God's plan. We must build our spiritual house on Jesus on Jesus Christ and the truth of his word. Jesus pointed to himself as a source when he said, I am the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming unto the Father but by me. That's John 4 and John 4 and 6. 
So, um, that's all that I have for Sunday School last night. I hope you guys enjoy this message. What What is your foundation built upon on? I pray and I hope that you guys enjoy uh, this video, this message that I share with you. I share with you guys. Until next time, it's your girl Melissa. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Bye bye.